morning, everyone. It's great to be here to sign the fiscal year 2020 budget. I'm pleased to have Treasurer Pierce, members of the Appropriations Committees, and members of my cabinet, as well as the team over here that actually, uh, who actually put the budget together. So thank you all for your efforts and, uh, and a, lot, a lot of late nights, I'm sure. In January, I presented a balanced budget that proposed investments and reforms to expand the economy and state revenues. By reversing Vermont's demographic trends, increasing the number of Vermonters working, supporting growth in downtowns and villages across the state, and investing in the things that make Vermont a great place to live, work, and visit. I pledge to work together with the legislature on ideas to help all 251 communities in Vermont grow, as well as work with them to modernize state government and manage our operational costs and financial obligations so we're not adding to the tax burden. The budget I'll sign today is a good, fiscally responsible budget, which funds many of the legislature's priorities, as well as initiatives that I proposed. And it does all this while keeping new spending to a level Vermonters can afford. I want to thank, uh, in particular, Senator Kitchell, Representative Cole, and her colleagues in the Senate and House for working with me and my team to build a budget that works for Vermonters. As every household knows, budgeting is about making choices. We must balance our many needs with our ability to pay, what we want with what we need. The budget in front of you uh, finds that balance between investing in priorities and maintaining fiscal discipline. For example, general fund spending grows at about 3%, which is in line with the growth in the economy and Vermonters' wages. It tackles our demographic uh, crisis by building on my proposals to retain and retrain workers and attract new families to Vermont. It moves us closer to a cradle-to-career education system by adding about $6 million more for childcare and about $3 million more for higher education. I'm particularly proud that in just two and a half years, we've increased our funding for childcare by nearly 30%. It also provides additional pay for frontline mental health providers, establishes a dedicated funding source for clean water that fills in the final gap without raising new taxes, and so much more. There's a lot to be proud of in this budget, and with Treasurer Pierce uh, here with us, I thought I would highlight a few of the financial steps we've taken with her assistance as well in her leadership to improve our fiscal fundamentals and put us on a more sustainable financial path. We made an extra $2.4 million base appropriation to the retired teachers uh, health care fund. And uh, any fiscal year 20 surplus over $20 million will also be directed to that fund. With changes made in budget adjustment, we've devoted half the fiscal 19 surplus to the retired state employees health care fund. Another example of making extra payments now to avoid larger payments in the future. This is good financial ma management for taxpayers and good for the future of Vermont. Those who follow our budget closely understand that funding our long-term liabilities is eating up larger and larger shares of, uh, of any new revenue. This year, over 40% of general fund revenue growth went to these liabilities. That's why the steps we took this year to address some of our debt is so valuable. Together, we've also built our reserves to help weather an economic downturn that, that's bound to happen, something Representative Toll has helped to draw attention to. Rever reserves provide confidence that government services and programs will continue without uh, disruption during tougher times. So not, not only does this budget meet statutory reserve requirements, it also dedicates a substantial portion of the fiscal year 19 surplus into the rainy day reserves. And knowing the time and energy Treasurer Pierce has devoted to these issues, including the clean water funding I mentioned, I'm pleased to have her here with us today. So thank you very much, Beth, for your good work. Looking ahead, the hard work of closing annual budget gaps will continue. This reality is exactly why I put an emphasis on growing our workforce and economy. Because as a Burlington business owner told me, we need more taxpayers, not more taxes. 
Together, we must look for ways we rethink how we do the work of state government so we can continue to deliver the services for Monterey's need while investing in economic growth and other shared priorities. To do so, we must think outside the box, which is exactly why I've asked my cabinet to do as we begin looking at budgeting in fiscal year 21 and beyond. So again, I'm pleased to be here to sign a budget that moves us in the right direction. I thank you again to all the legislators here today and those who aren't, who had a hand in crafting this bill. I very much appreciate it. So now I'll invite uh, Treasurer Pierce to say a few words as well. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. So I always talk about a structurally balanced budget, and a structurally balanced budget is one that takes your ongoing revenues and matches up to your ongoing expenditures and doesn't use uh, one-time revenues for, for ongoing programs and uses those dollars and also has a part, a, a place for paying down your long-term liabilities. This budget did that. It was a very responsible budget. It's, uh, it has increases in reserves, uh, which is, uh, thank you, thank you, Representative Toll, for your, your attention to that. Um, it also uh, begins to pay down some of our long-term liabilities. Um, it takes a look at some of the, some of the issues we have with uh, teacher health care, uh, state health care, as well as uh, the pensions. Uh, putting more money into those now, the governor is correct, saves you more money in the long term. Think about a mortgage. You know, if you, if you push it off, if you have a mortgage that's um, um, uh, backloaded, you're going to pay more interest. The taxpayer doesn't need to pay interest. We need to have a system in place where we lower the cost of interest for the taxpayer and be responsible and also uh, manage it in, in terms of our cash flows. And I want to thank the governor. I want to thank uh, Representative Toll. I want to thank uh, Senator Kitchell. And I really want to thank Suzanne Young back here uh, for her good work. We work together to get this done. It's about collaboration. And a structurally sound budget was the result. And uh, I just want to thank everyone. Um, I'm also excited about clean water. I have to tell you, I spent a little bit of time on that. Um, I think it was uh, 23 different uh, stakeholder meetings, and we met about 1,000 people. Um, it was a lot of work. Uh, we saw some in increases last year. Um, I don't remember the act number, but H777 last year provided uh, for some more passive um, uh, 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 clean water initiatives, and I'm delighted that that's taking place. Uh, and S96 is just a great bill. It has a delivery system that we're looking for. It has uh, an allocation process, and it has dollars associated with that. And I really want to thank the legislature. I want to thank Senator Kitchell for your work on that. And where are you, Julie? The fantastic work. Um, I'd give you a hand right now, but uh, uh, it's just fantastic. Uh, the co cooperation that we've had to get this done. That's what's special about Vermont. That's what we're able to accomplish. And I'm delighted uh, to work with the governor, with, uh, with, with the, the General Assembly, to get this done, and look forward to doing that uh, in fiscal year 2020, 21. So thank you. And I, I'm going to introduce uh, Representative Toll, who really worked hard on uh, making sure that we had uh, adequate reserves and then some. So thank you. <laughs> I don't know if my husband would agree with the reserves. I don't know if I'm that good at home with our reserves. <laughs> but uh, that's private money, and this is state money, and it's very important. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit from our committee's perspective. The governor did a, a wonderful job highlighting priorities in the budget that were addressed to child care, water quality, mental health, and I'm sure Senator Kitchell, uh, much of that was done in the Senate. Uh, as you get closer to the end, um, knowing what there is for revenues is, is different, and, and the Senate did a wonderful job with some additional spending that the House did not have uh, the dollars to do. Uh, but um, our committee uh, really uses the committees of jurisdiction to look at priorities and to fund priorities that really support all Vermonters. And other priorities that, that our committee uh, really keeps in focus are our liabilities, that uh, both the governor and secretary, uh, secretary, treasurer Pierce uh, talked about. And we're very pleased that we have a long-term plan to address our, our pensions and the related health costs. And, and they're very expensive. We have a plan. We're addressing them head on. And I do have to say it's been a pleasure working with the administration and the treasurer to take that bull by the horns and, and head in a good direction. Reserves is also um, priority, a large priority in House appropriations. 
And if we, we only have two weeks left in the fiscal year, and if we continue on the path that we're continuing on, the construct in the budget should put our reserves at approximately 15%. And the standards say that if to be prepared for the next recession, we need 12 to 18 percent in reserves. And so Vermont is really heading in the right direction. 18 would be great. I'm really happy if we can get to 15 by July 1. Um, the budget is balanced. I'm really excited to be here for a signing of the budget. It's sustainable, the budget that is before us. It's responsible. It addresses the needs of Vermonters and it also addresses our liabilities and preparing for the future. And uh, I'm very pleased with the work of our committee and the interaction that we've had with the governor and with the Senate and uh, with all of the committees of jurisdiction. And I think that we have a fine state budget for fiscal year 2020. Thank you. Um, I, I, never, I never get to do this, but I'd like to introduce Senator Ketchum. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm Jane Kitchell, and I chair the Senate Appropriations Committee. I have to uh, sort of give a historical perspective. Everybody's talking about, uh, you know, this budget, and it is a wonderful budget. Um, I've been in state government in some form or other for 50 years, so I've got a good perspective in terms of is this a good budget or not. And I really think in the end we um, have our fiscal house in order. We have good priorities. I was, um, being in the Senate can either be good or bad, but in this, uh, year, uh, we actually had more money to work with, um, and we used the money um, in, I believe, very um, um, uh, strategic ways. For me, the budget, and you look around the room, is really where all of state government comes together. And it's not only the work of the Appropriations Committee, and I want to thank the members who are here today, but it's um, every uh, committee of jurisdiction, whether it's our GovOps, who are talking about the importance of our emergency medical services and need to increase funding, to our mental health system, to whatever. So your budget is really the big bill. People don't realize your transportation bill is only the plan. There's no spending, there's no money for your transportation bill or the capital bill without the budget. Everything is really done through of the budget development process. And this year we did spend a lot of focus. I think it was balanced in terms of shoring up our basic safety net issues, looking at workforce, education, uh, child care, um, climate and environmental issues. We are happy about the clean water finally coming to um, some closure on that. Um, and everybody says, you know, Chittenden County gets everything. And I look about where the headwaters of all the rivers that flow into Lake Champlain. So we're giving everything to Chittenden County in a very different way. Um, <laughs> I just thought I would point that out. Because we hear it all the time. Chittenden County is um, where everything. But um, the budget does fund a number of initiatives, and we're really happy with um, how it worked out. Um, it was great working with the administration and coming to um, uh, where we are today, as well as all the work of the House. And we have the advantage of all the work that is done in the House on the budget before it comes over. So um, I'm very pleased to be here today, and I say after 50 years, this is a good budget, and uh, I'm glad the governor is going to sign it today. Thank you. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> all right. So it makes a good picture if you all come around. I don't get to do this very often. Sign a budget. Oh my goodness. I know. One over your shoulder. This is frightening. I know. Merci beaucoup. Thank, Thank you, you very much. <laughs>
<laughs> Are there any questions? I had a question about your veto yesterday. Any questions about the budget? <laughs> Uh, one, what, what about guidance for 21? Have you already given your uh, cabinet uh, and your department heads uh, at marching orders, or are you going to wait for the emergency orders? Well, I wouldn't say they're marching orders. Good morning. <laughs> um, this is why we're doing the budget. Um, I wouldn't say marching orders. We just want to be very realistic about where we're heading. Um, when we look at the, uh, the growth and expenditures in the future, uh, in, in every department and agency, we've, we've looked at the five-year uh, outlook, uh, and you can see uh, quite an alligator uh, mouth there uh, because the, <clears throat> the revenues are, are, uh, are not outpacing the expenditures. It's quite the opposite. Um, so we're looking at what I've charged my cabinet for doing is, is taking a look uh, at the five-year plan and what can we do to close that gap in the future? Are there things that we can do a look at outside the box? And, and we'll be working, you know, just to, to bring those ideas to the table and across uh, different, and we're not working in silos, we're working together as a cabinet to do that. And uh, when we come up with some ideas, we want to engage uh, the legislature as well because we think we all have to be in this together. And uh, because again, w the path we're on is unsustainable. Uh, because we have all the uh, all the surplus money we might see in the next uh, two or three or four years or whatever it is before a recession hits, uh, it's going to go to uh, to our, our pension liabilities. So, are a good majority of that. So we understand that, uh, and uh, so we're just looking at uh, different approaches. But there's no mandates at this point. No number. No number. Okay. Any other questions? Why did you veto the medical med monitoring bill? Um, you know, there was a lot of uh, outreach uh, from uh, many, many businesses uh, from my standpoint. Uh, this was uh, concerning and uh, many uh, are fearful of job losses, about the ability to find insurance. Uh, so uh, in this approach uh, that I believe uh, that we can take, we came very close uh, and I would say that everyone was working very hard to come to a yes. Uh, and there's still a path forward in order to do that. So. I'm, um, I'm looking forward in January. Uh, obviously, the legislature will have the, the prerogative of overriding that veto, or if, uh, if not successful, uh, that we can get back to the table and find a pathway to yes. Great, thank you very much. Thanks everyone for coming in.